Hey everyone, Steven here with another fragrance review from Red Essence, and today we'll be taking a closer look at London by Burberry. Now, I am wearing my glasses today just because they happen to be Burberry, so I thought it would have been very appropriate. Um, and without further ado, let's get down to the fragrance, uh, the meat and potatoes of this video, so to speak. Um, so today we do have London by Burberry. Now, this is a fairly recent purchase of mine, and it's very quickly become one of my favorite fragrances to date. It's very easily earned a top spot in my favorite fragrances of my personal collection. And that's primarily because I've never before come across a fragrance that captured the essence of the fall season so well in a bottle as this one has. Imagine you have a hand-woven straw basket of potpourri, such as the ones that you would find at Bed Bath & Beyond. Now imagine in that basket you have cinnamon bark, acorns, and pine cones. Now take a little bit of port wine, drizzle it on top, and throw in a few sweetened tobacco leaves, and that's exactly what you get out of this fragrance. It's very refined, it's spicy, it's modest at times, and it could be a modern interpretation of a classic. And I'll get a little bit more in detail about what I mean later on. Now the perfume made behind this one is Antoine Mason Dieu, and if the name does not ring a bell, um, a few other notable compositions of his are Burberry Brit. Burberry Sport, Armani Code, and this year's flanker release, Armani Code Ultimate. So he's no stranger to the uh, fragrance industry and he's gotten around to composing some of the better known fragrances out there. Now this one was made in 2006 and I believe that it's just as popular this year as it was in the year in which it was released. Now in terms of the notes for this fragrance, we have lavender, bergamot, and cinnamon in the top so it's spicy and sweet. In the mid, we have mimosa flower and leather. And then in the base, we have apopanax, tobacco leaf, guayac wood, and oak moss. Now there is oak moss in this fragrance, and that's why for me, it's very reminiscent of 80s powerhouses. Um, I'm not a very big fan of oak moss, but for those of you who are familiar with 80s powerhouses, you know that they would include such fragrances as um, Quorum by Antonio Puig, Z14 by Halston, Polo by Ralph Lauren, although the latter two were actually composed in the 70s. Now this one is a modern take on those classics because it has the oak moss, but it does have the cinnamon in there as well. So it adds that spicy yet sweet accord. Many people have even said that it has a hint of gourmand, although this fragrance is not a gourmand in any sense of the word. Now or genre for that matter. Now this one in the dry down, for me at least, it's very reminiscent to Victor and Rolf's Spice Bomb. So if you're a fan of Spice Bomb, you'll probably end up loving this fragrance and vice versa. So definitely give it a shot if you like one of those two fragrances. Now in terms of the uh, rating for this fragrance, for uniqueness, I ended up giving this one a 10 out of 10. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I like this primarily because I've never come across a fragrance before that captured the essence of the fall season in a bottle as well as this one has. So for that re reason alone, I gave this one a 10 out of 10. I believe that this fragrance is everything that Passion for Men by Elizabeth Taylor set out to be but failed at. I think that one is a very concophonous composition. This one is much more refined and much more appealing and agreeable to the olfactory senses. So this is one that I've been giving a lot of attention to lately so one of my favorites for sure for longevity I gave this one a 5 out of 10 I sprayed it on my wrists and only about 10 minutes later it smelled like it, I was very well into the dry down and that's something that's not very appealing to me and uh, this one is a, certainly a fragrance that I find myself reapplying very often so only a 5 out of 10 for longevity uh, for projection I wore this to work yesterday. I put on four sprays with one of them being on my t-shirt around 12 p.m. Uh, noon. About three hours later I had to reapply. I put yet another spray on my t-shirt and at four o'clock just an hour later I asked my brother who also happens to work at the same job that I do if he was able to smell this on me. Now my brother has quite a refined nose. Um, he's very keen on identifying certain notes and fragrances so I trust his opinion very much. And because my nose tends to tune out scents to cope with the stimuli that I'm uh, exposed to on a daily basis, I sought advice from somebody else. And he testified that even though he was standing a couple of feet away from me, 
he could not smell this fragrance on me. So that speaks volumes in terms of how well this one projects. And I determined that this is a fragrance that sits very close to the skin. So only a five out of 10 for projection. Versatility, I ended up giving this one a seven out of 10. As I mentioned earlier, this one is ex uh, reserved exclusively for the fall and winter seasons. But because it sits so close to the skin and because it's modest, um, I could picture myself wearing this on the cooler days in the spring and perhaps a cool day in the summer as well. In terms of presentation, I gave this one a 9 out of 10. I love the bottle, I love the box, I love the Burberry style fabric material that uh, is adhered to the box itself and um, to the bottle itself, excuse me. And on the box, instead of taking, instead of printing Burberry London on the box, they actually glued a fabric material to the box. So I think that was done in very good taste and I appreciate that about the people who put this one together. Um, my only qualm with this bottle is that my cap does not seem to stay on. Although it clicks in place, for some reason it just doesn't stay on on my bottle. And I'd like to know, if you own Burberry London, is that something that happens to your bottle too? Um, that's really what kept me from giving this one a perfect mark in terms of presentation with only a 9 out of 10. Um, and being that there are no discernible marks on my box, no creases, no indentations, no um, nothing damaged about it at all. So that, for me at least, it excludes the possibility of it having gotten uh, damaged during transit. So I'm wondering, is this a manufactured defect or is, just, is this just something that happened to my bottle alone? So I would like some clarification on that if you could provide it. So without further ado, this one earned an overall mark of 36 out of 50. So once again, if you have this bottle, uh, is this something that happens to your bottle as well? Um, how does it fare on your skin? Do you only wear it in the fall and uh, winter seasons as well? Or would, do you think that this one is compatible for the spring and summer seasons? As always, please don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. And this has been Steven with another fragrance review from Red Essence.